So that's the title of the lesson. What a real saint should look like during these times. Amen. In our Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse uh, number 34. 33 actually, he says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep uh, for the slaughter, he says. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors uh, through him that loved us. And so why are we more than conquerors? And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword? None of these things should move us to separate us from Christ. Uh, these things don't separate us from Christ, but we, when we lean on our own fear or understanding, separate ourselves from Christ. He says we are more than conquerors. So even as Alexander the Great conquered from city to city, place to place, the Bible says we're more than that Amen. because we have a connection with the Father and with His Son from heaven. Uh, the Bible says in in Peter, the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3, looking at verse number 22, he says, He has gone into heaven. He's at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto Him. So we have the angels also. That are dispatched. And we know we have here on earth. Satan has gone forth. And he is desiring that the world live in fear. That the world uh, seek after the, only the physical things. Not the spiritual. He has put it in the heart of men. To close down some congregations for fear. And he's put it in some rulers. To arrest individuals who are. Seeking to teach. Now most of these that I've heard are individuals who are denominations. Uh, no, nonetheless, uh, their their mind is carnal, so they're just seeking to close down. Now my question is, why don't they close down the Walmart? Why don't they arrest the manager at Walmart? Mm. Because he has more than 10 people. Wow. But cool. see, that's why they're carnal, because they understand, well, they need physical food. Well, saints need spiritual food. Amen. And so they see it more important, the physical, than the spiritual. Because then do you have managers and all over the world, gas stations all over the U.S. They're being arrested for having more than 10 people That's inside right. those locations. But why? This is Satan's hand on the mind of men, on the mind of the rulers That's right. at this time. It says, for verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, that's what's first, uh, principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that means all the deep state rulers, Mr. Bill Gates, uh, any other ruler that desires to implement a law that separates us from God, cannot separate us uh, from the love of Christ right. that he has for us. And so they they think because they cannot see God uh, and they just see with their physical eyes, hear with their physical ears. Mm -hmm. And because God's patience and long suffering is being executed as well, that they won't be killed by God or that they won't receive a punishment. And so many of these individuals, they have allowed the carnal mind, the flesh, to override what God has said in His Word. Now, if we look at the scriptures here in, um, in the book of Peter. Look at the book of Peter. I want to look at a specific chapter. It's, uh, give me one second, saints. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. 
The, sub, the scripture says, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, mm -hmm. whether it be to the king as su supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Now, if you look at this verse, verse 14, he says, Or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers, mm -hmm. and for the praise of them that do well. Now, when has worship become something punishment or when has God described it as something that is evil when has the scriptures ever described worshiping to God as an evil thing to be punished by a governor or a king and when has God ever allowed governors and kings to set up an ordinance because it says in verse 13 submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. But here's the key word. Lord's sake. Mm -hmm. The ordinance of a man to shut down worship. Governor or king. Is not for the Lord's sake. Amen. It's for man's sake. It's for his sake. And so that's where we got to rightly divide. That scripture and that verse. So we don't let our brethren hurt themselves. And we don't let false teachers. Uh, deceive us. And to think well. 1 Peter chapter 2. 13 through 15. We have to submit to the ordinance of a man. But that is not for the Lord's sake. Understand that. Remember what Paul did. We look at 2 Corinthians letter. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Looking at verse number uh, 24. The scripture says he's describing what he's been through. Now, why wasn't Paul just submissive? Why didn't he just keep his mouth shut? Why didn't he just submit? Amen. Verse 24 says, Of the Jews five times received our forty stripes, say one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, perils of the heathen, in the perils of the city, in perils in the Perils in the wilderness and perils in the sea and perils among false brethren. That's another key word. You got to go through perils with false brethren too. That's who call themselves Church of Christ. In weariness and painfulness and watchings often. Staying late at night. In hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst. Sometimes he was hungry. Sometimes he was thirsty. But what did he tell the Philippians? In the book of Philippians. He says he knew how to abound. Yes. Right. He says he knew how to abound. And he knew how to do with. And he knew how to do without. Mm -hmm. So that's something to remember as well. As we go through what we're going through. Just to just remember uh, the sufferings that Paul went through. So if we continue reading in verse number uh 28 the scripture says beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily he says the care of all the churches the care of all the churches Paul had the mindset of Christ which is the care of all the churches he cared for the state of the all the churches of Christ just like Jesus does just like we should have that care for the churches of Christ that they execute God's work Worship and judgments continually until he comes. That's the charge. Verse 29, who is weak and I am not weak. Who is offended and I burn not. So that word burn means angry. Means frustrated. Verse 30 says, if I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Verse number 32 says, In Damascus, the governor under the Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damas Damascene, Damascenes with a garrison mm. desires to apprehend me. So we got two different rulers here in verse number 32. We got in, D in Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king. So the king 
told the governor to set the city up with a garrison to apprehend Paul. Because what is Paul doing? He's preaching the gospel. He's stirring up the truth in the hearts of men. Verse 33 says, And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hand. So why wasn't Paul submissive to the rule and subject to ordinance of man? Because it was not for the Lord's sake. Amen. That's why he escaped him. That's why he did what he did. And so this is part of our walk, saints. This is part of what the image we have to show as well. Uh, continually. Because Satan knows that his time is short. He's ticking down the clock until Christ returns. And he is rushing as fast as he can in order to have as much souls lost and also that souls in the kingdom mm -hmm. fall away from the faith. That's what he wants. He wants souls to die lost outside of the church as fast as he can before they hear the gospel and in the church for them to lose faith, lose strength, lose obedience and for them to be carnal minded so he knows he has their soul. We can't let that happen. Hebrews 11, this is a fight. This is a fight. Hebrews 11. Look at verse 29. It says about faith. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Verse number 29 says about faith. They passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians a saying to do were drowned. So you had the ten plagues plus all the soldiers that were drowned afterward that desired to destroy them. Verse 30 says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about uh, seven days. What happened to the one of the citizens, Rahab and her family, verse 31, By faith the heart of Rahab perished not with them that believe not when she had received the spies with peace. Verse 32, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Look at the list. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of of lions. You know, Daniel, concerning all the princes that were against him and what he went through, they desired to cast him into the lion's den. But what happened afterward? The angels shut the mouth of the lions and he was not killed. The king, the ruler, he loved Daniel. He didn't, didn't desire that he be killed. But the idea is that he knew that the princess made a law and he could not uh, go against it at that time. Amen. But he said, pray to your God, Daniel. He will rescue you. Mm -hmm. And so what happened next is all those princes and their families were thrown into the lion's den afterward. Now, through faith, he believed. Look at verse 34. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies uh, of the aliens. So all these details of these men, saints, Gideon with 300, Barak and Deborah, Samson, Jephthah, David also. You know, David it was a time frame when um, his wives were taken. And what did he do? He's, he's, they wanted to kill David. That's right. He strengthened himself in the Lord. And he believed. And God could deliver them back to, to us. And he can deliver us in this fight. And so the other people were hopeless. But David strengthened himself and moved the people so that they could believe. And so what did they do? They received the, his wives back and also the people came back. Look at verse 35. It says, 
Women received their dead, raised to life again. Amen. You know, that was Elijah as well. One, And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. Mm. So the, for those that even taught the doctrine, like the Sadducees, that there was no resurrection. Understand that they believed that there was going to be a resurrection. In verse 36 says, And others had trial of cruel mockings scourgings yea moreover of bonds and imprisonments they were stoned they were sawn asunder can you imagine being sawn asunder with a saw mm, no. this isn't a quick uh, bullet to the head this is a sawing a moving mm. back and forward going through bones ligaments blood whether it be arm whether it be head um, sawing asunder you know, we know that in some places they have a law where if you steal, I think it's in Dubai, if you steal, they cut your hand off. Mm -hmm. And so many, there was a comment made about a gentleman that had his jewelry all along the, uh, the sidewalk. And someone asked him, aren't you afraid someone will just steal the jewelry? He said, no, we have a law if they steal, we cut their hands off. Mm. And so that's for carnal uh, treasure, carnal things. And when it comes to that law, we know this law in the scriptures, they were serving God. And they cut, got caught asunder, cut asunder for serving God. The scripture says we're tempted. And what about the temptation that came to Joseph? And what did he do? He overcame it. He didn't yield to it were slain with the sword they wanted about in sheepskins and goatskin being destitute afflicted or tormented and so all these things saints uh, the saints went through of whom the world was not worthy they wanted in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth and these all having obtained a good report through faith uh, received not the promise God having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. And we know Joseph, she was trying to tempt him, but he did not yield to her temptation. And so all these things, saints, they went through. Can you imagine the things that they went through in the wilderness where God has separated and he tried them in the wilderness. They were killed of serpents. Uh, some of them, they were, the earth was opened up and they were slain. Mm -hmm. Some of them dropped dead because of a plague. And Moses told Aaron to grab the censer, to light the censer. Uh, the plague has gone out. And so there was thousands that died because of the disobedience of the Hebrews. And so all these things, um, Moses and Aaron, they, they went through and they seen the effect uh, of fear. They seen the effect of those who had faith and belief, and those who had not. They despised the bread, angels' food, which came down from heaven. Yes. They said, oh, how we wish we had uh, the cucumbers and the onions oh, in Egypt. Goodness. You know, not saying they will come to that in our lifetime, but just remember, saints, uh, be content with what you have. Yes. Um, yes. Concerning murmuring, uh, do not do not murmur. That's right. Just be content because God is well pleased uh, with that characteristics to be content in what you have. Amen. And so, saints, all these examples are here for us, uh, for us to learn um, in order to continue this walk with those. Amen. Yeah, this is a great lesson. God bless you, brother. Amen. God bless those that are here. Who are here. You know, I think what happens is when you read it, I'm listening at these things you're reading, you're describing that song, and now man begins to doubt. You know, I used to wonder why they would keep concentration camps and keep things where people were killed because you have people that don't believe. Uh, that was a big push a few years ago that was disputed that Germany ever did torture that many Jews. Uh, six million. It's such an unheard of number that it enraged the Jewish community who had 
people who still survive. There are people still to this day that were at those camps. And they are appalled that someone would even say that. Because see, the German community like America really doesn't want to keep talking about what it did. Its ancestors, uh, those that before them. America doesn't want to talk about that it killed blacks. It treated them like animals. It was promoted by the government. Uh, it was promoted by uh, the kings. It's like the White House. It was promoted. Uh, it was actually promoted by the founding fathers. When they wrote the Constitution, many of them had slaves. And America doesn't want to talk about it. And they made a big push a while ago to have that information taken from the history books. But it was refused just as Germany doesn't want it to be talked about. But when you go to those camps or you see pictures, that was like a nightmare from hell for those Jews that experienced it. Whether they were real Jews or not, it's irrelevant. The people that went through it, it doesn't matter if they had not an ounce of Jewish blood. It was six million people killed. They were fried, their bodies were tortured, experiments of ungodly proportion were done. And when Brother Frias is reading this, in this well-taught lesson, you look at this, we have nothing but the word of God to prove that this happened. But we have to believe this, because we are in an experience now, we didn't see the 1918, some of us, don't remember about the Hong Kong flu. Some of us don't even remember the swine flu. How it took lives. But the people that lost their loved ones. That went there and cried. And know man this person would have been alive. I remember my dad. Uh, getting encephalitis. It was a terrible struggle. I mean it almost killed him. A mosquito bite. You can't hide from mosquitoes. They're everywhere. I mean stay inside. Do all you want. But they're everywhere. Resistance gets down when you get old, and that's why people die. So anyway, long story short, is we, we thank God for this record of these saints that were tortured. So we will know forever that this did happen. That's why he said, don't remove the ancient landmarks. And for us to gather as an ancient landmark that we cannot be allowed to remove. So thank you, brother, for teaching this. Amen. God bless you, brother. That's true. And we have to remember these. These examples, these words, don't forget them. Amen. Don't remember your fear, your, the news over these scriptures. Yes. These scriptures are examples for you to get strength. And the same chapter, God bless you, brothers, and the same chapter, Hebrews 11, 24. He says, by faith, belief, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses could have had everything. That's right. He could have had everything. He, was, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But he could have been a man with everything Egypt had. But he refused that. He refused. He would rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Some states it's the opposite. They rather en rather enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season than to suffer with the saints. They'll do the opposite. Verse 26 says, Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Wow. So he esteemed, he measured, he calculated the reproach of Christ mm. that I'm receiving. This is greater than than the treasures of Egypt, than the wealth of Egypt. It's more important than the tr treasures of Egypt. Is worship unto God more important than what you're going through? Or is what you're going through more important mm. than worship unto God? For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He knew, I'm going to get a reward after this. That's why I'm suffering like this and through this because I know at the end God has a promise of a recompense to reward to the faithful. Verse 27 says by faith he forsook Egypt. He said bye bye for not fearing the wrath of the king. Again not fearing the wrath of the king. So he went against against that ruler who did not want the children of Israel to worship in the wilderness. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Look what he did. He kept worship. Kept the Passover. Man, and the sprinkling of blood. 
lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So why did he just fear the Egyptians? Why did he have to keep the Passover? Is that really important? Didn't he fear that the Egyptians could just come through with their spears and swords and start killing? Amen. Why didn't he fear that they were in close proximity where the Egyptians were? The army was there. Why didn't they just fear, man? We've there's a lot of plagues that hit Egypt. I don't I don't think that's necessary right now to do the Passover. We got to be careful with our lives that that they don't come in here and kill us. I don't think the Passover is necessary. We'll we'll do that uh, next time or later on. Mm. We shouldn't be doing that right now. We should focus on protecting ourselves if they come. Mm. And so, but by faith, he kept the Passover. And so what do we do? By faith, we keep worship. That's right. Because the scripture says numerous times gathering together. It says in 1 Corinthians 11, when you gather together in one place, not in different places. He says in one place mm. when you gather together. So that scripture is as powerful. It gives great detail Man. about what we should do, saints. Um, because Christ one day is going to return. He's going to return with flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. That's how the world's going to end. It's not going to work in through any other way, uh, whether there be wars, rumors of wars, whether there be any other type of famine that comes in the future, any type of, as we read Romans 8, uh, things present or things to come, principalities or powers. Mm -hmm. None of those things are going to destroy this earth. The saints are still going to be on earth. Because Christ said he's going to come down midair. And those in paradise will resurrect out. And then those who are on earth will be taken afterward. And so that's what's going to happen. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse number 8 says, Book, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should come to repentance. That's what His mind is toward the saints. He's going to come one day. He's long-suffering. But do not take advantage of him being long-suffering. Amen. Do not take that as a form of weakness. Do not try to see that as an advantage to be carnal in sin. Verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as the thief in the night, and the wish the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then... That all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And so this is what's going to happen. This has not happened during the time of Jerusalem. This is going to happen in the future where all these things will be dissolved. The heavens, the earth, and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And there, there will be weeping and gnashing. Of teeth uh, forever and ever. Now in Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter number 12. Just remember saints. Whatever we go through in this life. Verse number 3 says. For consider him. Always look at Christ. Mm -hmm. That endures such a contradiction. Of sinners against himself. Lest ye be weird and faint. In your minds. So that consideration. You have to look at. His footsteps. His ways what he thought what he did consider that and also embrace that mindset according to what he did so that word consider is g357 to estimate contemplate because he endured contradiction of sinners so you won't get worried on your own mind. Because see your own mind becomes worried. Because you you measure things. You estimate things based off what you're going through. 
and what you've been through in the past. And you don't, you don't consider and you don't contemplate what Christ has been through mm. to, as an example to show, hey, if he's been through that, then I can go through this. And so verse 4 says, you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. You haven't gone to that level. You haven't reached that point. Amen. And so why is he saying this? So they can be strong in the Lord. So they can have strength and be able to endure. If they don't have this as a part of their mind, then their own mind will become weakened. That's right. They'll be like the Gentiles. And we know how the Gentiles are, the fear that they have. This world is, is in fear, shaking. And so we shouldn't have that. The, the saints shouldn't have that type of mindset. Look at verse number 5. Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourge it every son whom he received. If you endure chastening, God did it with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? And so you have to receive this as sons and daughters. If you've been born again, you have to go through this chastisement. Uh, the correction, the instruction, you have to receive it. If you have put yourself in a fetal position mentally uh, to accept the fear and accept the ordinance that the governor has set up that you cannot worship then the idea is that you have to break from that and understand that Christ does not accept that thought or that mindset Amen. and receive the correction that is coming from saints all over the world that are fighting to worship on the first day of the week and this is happening all over the world there's saints that are fearful, shackled up. There's some that won't come outside. There's some that are strong and trying to encourage those that are weak. And this is not a put down. This is just a reality that in the Bible, there were saints that were weak, feeble, that needed to be strengthened. And then there's some that are strong, that they have strength, then they become feeble, they need to be re-strengthened. You know, as Jesus told Peter, mm -hmm. you know, to... Concerning him, when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. That's right. So he needed that strength as well. And uh, so that's that's the thing, saints. Faith comes by hearing, and he hearing by the word of God. If you're not hearing the word of God, how can you continue to develop and build your faith? And there's going to be a cease. Jesus said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But if you shut down the dam or the river from the river from flowing then there's going to be no continuation of hearing the sound of the water's flow, which is the Word of God. Romans 10, looking at verse 14, actually 13, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, the call here, if you go to Acts chapter 22, looking at verse number 16, to get an example. It's not just, Lord, be my Lord, be my Savior. Uh, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Rescue me from my sins. Uh, and, and you'll say, that's, that's a call that denominations teach. That's not in the Bible. Look at verse 16. Acts 22, 16. It says, And now why... Terrorist thou, arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord. The authority that comes in in baptism when the male immerses you is that he says, wash away your sins. By doing that, you're being baptized and Christ washes away your sins. And so, this is a call of obedience. And verse number 14 of Romans 10. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So, the hearing. Uh, it's impossible for saints 
and the word and the world to hear God if you close the doors of worship. Mm -hmm. How is a proclamation, the publishing of the truth going to continue if you close the worship? Their goal and Satan's goal is the intent to close the mouth of God's sons and daughters. That's what it's, that's what Satan wants is to close their mouth that souls will not be saved, built up, edified. That's his whole intent. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So the minister has to come out the oracles and repeat it. Verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, that verse 15, how shall they preach except they be sent? Concerning Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, Muslim, and all these denominations, they are not sent by God. Amen. So their zeal that they have is all in vain. Apollos had zeal, but he was only preaching John's baptism. Yes. Apollos and his wife, uh, Apollos had to, put, not Apollos, I'm sorry. Apollos had to be put aside uh, by his wife, and I want to bring the names uh, here quickly. But in Acts chapter 18, uh, Priscilla and Achilla is the name. They put him aside and taught him, expounded unto him the word of God more right. perfectly. It says in Acts chapter 18, uh, verse 26, He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Achilla and Priscilla had heard, they took him in unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Mm. And so that's what these ministers need to hear. Those who are outside of the body of Christ, the way of God more perfectly, that they may be born again. Uh, because what they're doing is they're just leading the blind to the ditch. They're blind. They're leading the blind hmm. both into the ditch. That's right. And so a man that is blind and has zeal to run in that one direction is going to run into a wall or a ditch. That's all he has. Because he's blind. Verse number 16 says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report? He said that in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? The report of the truth. The report that Christ came, he died, he was buried according to the scriptures. Resurrected according to the scriptures. Purchased the church with his own blood. He done away with the, with the Old Testament. Hebrews 9, the wall of partition between Jew and Gentile. The salvation of the soul. In baptism, where Christ removes his sins, gives the Holy Ghost. Who has believed that report? Who has believed it? Many fight against it. They create their own gospel. But Galatians chapter 1 says, If a man or an angel comes and preaches another gospel, he says, Let him be accursed. Verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You have to hear God's word. And it has to be spoken by a minister. And... You can't close the churches because you're closing down the ability for it to be heard. God didn't say for it to be heard through different places, through live streaming. But in one place, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, if you preach the word of God, you may be despised. Isaiah 53, 3 says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Paul said, we are despised. He was mentioning himself. Why? Because he is walking, carrying his cross, embracing the mind of Christ, repeating the same words of Christ. That's why he despised. The world would despise you because you're doing this, because you're gathering to worship. They'll judge you as being unsafe. But you can judge them as being hypocritical as well. Because why? They go to the store where there's much people, mm. hundreds sometimes. And what do they do? They shop for the physical things. Judging in themselves what? That they're carnal minded. They're carnal minded. And so you put God above the physical food and you're coming to worship. And so their mindset is on earthly things. That's what they seek for. Earthly things. Look at verse number 18. It says, But I say, have ye 
Have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went out, went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? For Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation will I anger you. So here's what's happening. You have those in the world scoffing at the saints for worshiping. Why are you worshiping? The world, many, and in the church are saying, mm -hmm. follow the ordinance of man. You must subject yourself to the ordinance of man. But it's not for Christ's sake. It's not for the Lord's sake. That's, right. That's not why, why it's being done. Uh, now, if you look at this same verse and the detail of it, the sound is going out to all the world. But either saints will embrace the mindset, even as it's mentioned in the last chapter of Acts, chapter 28, verse 27, uh, 26, he says, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see and not perceive. What are they doing? They're kicking against the pricks. Verse 27 for the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, mm -hmm. and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Mm -hmm. Great reason among themselves. Isn't that the same thing that happens today? Well, you know, Romans 13, well, 1 Peter 2 says, What are they doing? They're fearful to go to jail. Mm -hmm. They're fearful to suffer for Christ. They're fearful to stand up for what God has instructed. And Satan is testing it. Not just Satan, but also the rulers of this land. Because they had it in their heart. And then Satan sees that. He enters into them. And so this is being executed. Saints, this life is temporal. It's a temporary place. James said it's a vapor. Yes. It appears for a little time then vanishes away. All men are as grass. And all their glory is like the flower of the field. Paul said in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, concerning a new body. That's what he's looking for. And we're looking for a new body, and a heavenly body that cannot be destroyed. That's what our hope is in. You can't take this Walmart, Kroger food with you. You can't take this house with you, this money with you, this job with you. That's right. It's all for the belly. It goes out to draw. Shelter only shelters you from heat, rain. You can't take none of these things with you. They are for a temporary time frame. Now, there's been time frames in the Bible. In the times of Solomon. Many saints, um, they didn't have to go through times like this of war. He gave Solomon peace until he was older. Then he created... Um, false god worship palaces for his wives and then he brought a ruler against Solomon but for the majority of his life there was peace That's right. but the idea is that in the Bible they had times of peace and then they had times of tumult but we had these scriptures to comfort us in knowing what to do and what to believe during the times of tumult and not lean on our own understanding uh, or our own ways. Man. Because when you do that. You're going to stumble. The book of Proverbs talks about that. Concerning lean not on your own understanding. Jeremiah talks about. It is not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. So what are we to do? Not direct our own steps. On how we believe. On how we think. Man. Zechariah chapter 14. We read that uh, last week. That he's asking everybody to come. To worship. In verse number 10. Zechariah 14. Verse number uh, 16. He says. And it shall come to pass. That everyone that is left of all the nations. Which came against Jerusalem. 
shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Keep the feast of tabernacles. What did Moses do? He kept the Passover. What is God asking? Those armies that went against Jerusalem, come. Isn't it a blessing that in John chapter 4, when Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, now, in John chapter 4, he says in verse 21, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so the saints are being scattered because leaders are being fearful and they are not gathering the saints together even in houses they had churches in houses where they gathered and so saints are not even leaving their homes to gather to some saints houses to gather as well because they allowed fear to overcome them but what did God said in Zechariah 14 17 and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem. To do what? To worship the king, the Lord of hosts. Even upon them shall be no rain. Mm. And so they justify it and, and say, well, we have to go up to Walmart to buy food. Because then there will be no food. And so put God first. Matthew chapter 6 says, seek God in his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 18 says, and if the family of Egypt... Go not up, and come not, that have no rain. There shall be the plague, where the Lord will smite the heathen, that come not up to the, keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the punishment of all nations, that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. And so saints, that was the Old Testament. That was their charge. Today is... The charge where two or three are gathered in my name. They have to be together in his name. Uh, many men are choosing to be cowards over being bold. The Bible says to be bold as a lion and to not be fearful. That's right. Perfect love casts out fear. It removes it from your heart. And so some saints don't have love or the care for the church. Or love for God to that point where they would do that. They just have these names. Elder, deacon, preacher, teacher. But they don't have the belief and faith during this time frame. And this is not even as bad as the time frames that we mentioned in Hebrews 11. Amen. It hasn't even got to that point that some of the suffering that they reach. Imagine how they would be when it comes to, if it comes to that point. How they would be, you know, you know, some uh, blasphemed the name of God because they feared. Um, others didn't blaspheme the name of God because they feared God over man. And so this is something we should take heed to, saints, because Christ will one day return. And he asked the question, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on earth? Will he find it? Will he find it in us, or will he find us in a fetal position in fear of man instead of him? At this time, saints will be closing. Our brother can close us out.